I also try to avoid too much fruit. Spiking your sugar is not healthy in the long run. Introducing Dr. David Sinclair, a distinguished professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School renowned for his expertise in longevity. With a focus on holistic health practices, he advocates for a lifestyle that includes predominantly plant-based nutrition, intermittent fasting, and select supplements to promote longevity and vitality. Healthy Long Life Channel offers an in-depth exploration of his invaluable insights, but today, we're delving into the top three fruits he incorporates into his diet. This focus is particularly noteworthy as Dr. Sinclair emphasizes the detrimental effects of excessive sugar intake on our overall health and aging process. Clearly, any type of sugar is bad. Uh, raw sugar, uh, fructose, sucrose, bad. Uh, carbohydrates, I would try to not eat too much of unprocessed carbohydrates. Keeping your blood sugar levels at a steady level, not too high, is clearly important. No, nobody would doubt that. Cancer cells, by the way, love sugar. They live on sugar. And that's another reason why you should try to keep it low. Cancer okay. cells won't grow as well. And we all have cancer cells in our body all the time. Every day we have cancer starting up and our bodies kill it. As we get older, our bodies don't do that. Our immune system goes down yeah. and cancer can now multiply. So if you stay young, you probably won't get cancer. While he generally prioritizes vegetables over fruits due to their lower fructose content, there are three fruits that hold a special place in his regimen. Join us as we uncover the three fruits endorsed by Dr. Sinclair for their contributions to a healthy, prolonged life. First, avocado. If I could only eat one fruit, it would probably be avocados. When asked on top foods, not just limiting to fruits but of all foods, Dr. David Sinclair singled out avocados. Avocado is often hailed as a superfood for numerous reasons, making it a staple in many health-conscious diets. Avocados are packed with essential nutrients. They are rich in vitamin C, E, K, and B vitamins, including folate. Additionally, they contain minerals such as potassium, magnesium, and copper, all of which are vital for various bodily functions including nerve function, muscle contraction, and bone health. The main reason for Dr. Sinclair to pick avocados as his top choice stems from their remarkably high content of oleic acid. Oleic acid, which is produced when we were hungry and now fat breaks down, but also we can get oleic acid from uh, olive oil, avocados, nuts, and it may be that the, the benefits we get from those foods are largely because those foods are turning on our defense pathways against aging. And oleic acid will activate CERT1, which is an enzyme that controls longevity in our bodies. And so we know at least some of the components, such as oleic acid, are extremely beneficial, as well as those unsaturated fats that come up. Avocados are primarily composed of healthy monounsaturated fats, particularly oleic acid. These fats are beneficial for heart health, as they help to reduce levels of LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, while increasing levels of HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. The presence of oleic acid also contributes to the fruit's anti-inflammatory properties. Oleic acid, a monounsaturated omega-9 fatty acid, maintains cell membrane integrity, regulates gene expression related to inflammation and cell survival, and acts as an antioxidant, neutralizing harmful free radicals. By modulating these pathways, oleic acid helps mitigate age-related inflammation, oxidative stress, and cellular damage, ultimately promoting overall health and longevity. Avocados are an excellent source of dietary fiber, with both soluble and insoluble fiber varieties. This fiber content aids in digestion, promotes satiety, and helps regulate blood sugar levels, making it beneficial for weight management and reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes. Avocados contain various antioxidants, including carotenoids such as lutein and zeaxanthin, which are essential for eye health and may help reduce the risk of age-related macular degeneration. Lastly, antioxidants help protect cells from damage caused by free radicals, thereby reducing inflammation and lowering the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease and certain cancers. In line with what Dr. David Sinclair emphasized, avocados are sugar-free. Dr. Sinclair stresses that our modern diet is so full of sugar, it is best to minimize the intake of sugar, whether it being glucose or fructose. Well, there's, there's glucose and fructose, okay? So it doesn't really matter where you get it. These are just chemicals that's the same chemical wherever you get it from. Glucose, you need glucose, right? We, we, again, we die without glucose. But the foods in, in our world are so full of sugars that we're constantly feeding ourselves uh, more sugar than we ever would have experienced even just 100 years ago. Compared to foods with added sugar, foods naturally containing sugars usually provide essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, making them nutrient-dense. 
I definitely like fruit and I eat fruit and I encourage it with my kids. It's a, it's a balance. You want the most nutrition and vitamins and the lower amount of sugar. On a scale of, of that ratio, uh, I think Rhonda Patrick's right that grapes have more sugar than nutrition compared to other fruits. However, within the spectrum, there are two fruits singled out by Dr. Sinclair for their exceptional balance of fructose and nutrients. Second, cantaloupe or rock melon. The next would be cantaloupe or rock melon, as I would call it. As a fruit, that's the most nutritious you can get. The other fruit that I think is worth looking at is cantaloupe or rock melon. That, I believe, has the most uh, nutrition versus sugar of any fruit. Cantaloupe, also known as rock melon, offers a favorable balance of fructose and nutrients compared to many other fruits. With a lower glycemic index than high fructose options like grapes and mangoes, cantaloupe has a gentler impact on blood sugar levels, making it a wise choice for individuals managing diabetes or seeking blood sugar control. Moreover, its rich hydration properties, owing to its high water content, make it an excellent choice for replenishing fluids, especially during warm weather or after physical exertion. Beyond its hydrating qualities, cantaloupes boast an impressive array of vitamins and minerals. They're particularly lauded for their robust vitamin C content, essential for bolstering immune function and collagen synthesis, as well as their abundance of vitamin A in the form of beta-carotene, crucial for maintaining healthy vision and skin. Remarkably, in certain studies, cantaloupes have been found to contain comparable levels of beta-carotene to carrots. Additionally, they provide potassium, vital for regulating blood pressure and supporting muscle function. Overall, cantaloupes offer a multifaceted nutritional profile, making them a valuable addition to any balanced diet. Third, colorful berries. The types of fruits that I like to have are ones that have lots of polyphenols, colored fruits such as blueberries, blackberries, those things. Um, you don't want to eat too many of them, of course, because then you, you're basically eating tons of sugar in it anyway. But yeah, blueberries I would have in, in a yogurt in the morning if I had, had some. Blueberries, I snack on those pretty often. Colored berries like blueberries and blackberries are high in polyphenol, a class of antioxidants found in plant foods. Polyphenol found in berries offer numerous health benefits, primarily through their antioxidant activity, anti-inflammatory effects, and positive impact on cardiovascular health. You can look for foods that have a lot of color, the purples, the reds, the very deep greens. These are signs that the plants are making healthy molecules. Polyphenols are little chemicals that are found in plants, when, particularly when those plants are stressed out. Plants under stress produce chemicals to shield themselves from harsh conditions. These protective bioactive compounds, known as polyphenol, lend the vibrant hues seen in plants and fruits such as berries and avocados. Dr. Sinclair, alongside his scientific collaborators, has introduced the concept of xenohormesis. Xenohormesis is a biological principle that explains how environmentally stressed plants produce bioactive compounds that can confer stress resistance and survival benefits to animals that consume them. The xeno means cross-species, and hormesis is the term that what doesn't kill you makes you live longer and be healthier. And so we're getting cross-species health improvements by molecules that plants make. And plants make these molecules when they're also under adversity or perceived adversity. And that's because these plants make these colorful and xenohermetic molecules that make themselves stress-resistant, turn on their sirtuin defenses, the sir genes, remember, and when we eat them, we get those same benefits. That's the idea. And we've evolved to do so. This isn't a coincidence. It's our theory that we want to know when our food supply is, is under adversity because we need to get ready for a famine. And so we hunker down and preserve our body. And by eating these colored foods, so I, practically speaking, if it's full of color or if there's been some chewing by a caterpillar, organic, grown locally in local farms, I'll eat that. If you want to know more from Dr. Sinclair's teaching, please refer to this video which highlights the essence of his numerous talks which was viewed by more than 4 million people around the world.